Hello, everybody. My name is Roger, and with me today is Alex, and we are here to present the Database Team 16.9 planning session. Um, coming into 16.9, we are rolling over a lot of priorities and themes from 16.8. Large part, this is because a lot of the Database Team's efforts span multiple milestones, and a lot of this work just doesn't usually tie up really nicely with releases because there tend to be more infrastructure level improvements. Um, first I'll up, I'll also our... add that uh, we did see some decreased velocity due to the holidays. Yes, that is a good point. We definitely had a number of folks out over the over holiday break, and hopefully everybody's come back feeling more refreshed and ready to dig in with a clear head. So we wanted to circle back and provide some updates on some of our themes that we've been working on late last year. Um, Primary, these three themes here, lightweight lock contention, size reduction, and wall rate reduction, all have to do with improving GitLab.com's ability to scale. Um, so I know for lightweight lock contention, we'd already done a number of small improvements, not so small improvements, mitigation improvements in terms of removing underutilized indices and other things like that. Alex, do you want to share a bit more about the vertical table splits and plan caching that we're additionally looking to build in? Yeah, so there are... The, the big hit we take for lightweight lock contention is on indexes, but it happens at planning time. So if we can, if we, so we're, we're looking to utilize functions for primary key lookups, which account for a large, so primary key lookups account for a large percentage of our queries in GitLab. And if we use Postgres functions, uh, it will cache the plan uh, and because primary key lookups are pretty simple, the plans typically don't change that much. Uh, and that means caching the plan, uh, it'll know to ignore the extra indexes when it does that lookup, and it won't take a lock on them. Uh, and for the, the vertical table splitting, it, there are two ways... So we're also looking at vertical table splitting as a part of our, light, uh, our wall reduction, but... Uh, it would be implemented completely differently for that. Uh, the tech, the underlying technology is the same, but the target is different. So for lightweight lock contention, we would target pulling out data that is indexed into its own vertically split tables so that those indexes that are infrequently used can be, uh, can, can be just on that other table and that data can be loaded after we do the other lookups. Uh, so if it's infrequently used, um, we we can offload that overhead to a second table is the idea there. Um, for wall rate, uh, I can talk about it when we get to that item. I don't need to talk about it. Well, we, we, can, we can go there pretty quickly. I think for table size reduction, this has been a longstanding theme for the database team across various dimensions. I think our capacity to directly reduce table sizes is tricky because we can't just arbitrarily delete a whole bunch of data but definitely partitioning related efforts is part of this. And I think at this point, um, our focus in helping other groups, specifically CI and merge request tables be partitioned is in a very stable space. So we're mostly just acting in support while those teams continue to drive those um, initiatives forward. I think there is some exciting update. I know, for example, in the case of CI builds, they've started writing to a new partition and we've seen that this has reduced load on the CI builds table and the amount of work vacuum needs to do. And that has allowed some background migrations to complete in weeks instead of months. So definitely some really notable performance improvements through this effort. And we want to continue investing here uh, to sort of bring us some longstanding, but sort of slow incremental growth over time. Yeah. So the other part of this is our efforts are, uh, we don't have a lot of folks uh super involved in this right now because it's it's largely on the teams that are working on it. Uh, that said, with the CI partitioning, they recently identified a weird uh, Postgres scenario where it it does some like cascade deleting stuff if you move things between partitions. So we're investigating that, but otherwise we're we don't have a lot of involvement in either of these efforts at the moment. Uh, it's mainly the teams working on uh, implementing either, uh, sorry, utilizing helpers we've created or updating queries to make sure that they utilize uh, the, the new partitions. 
Ooh. But yes, uh, agreed. We've seen some great, great results already, especially for the CI partitioning. I'm, I'm very, very happy with what's going on over there. So nice. And then that brings us to the topic you were just about to touch on with wall rate, Alex. Yeah. So, um, wall rate. That's you know the write ahead logs. Uh, if if we have too much of it, we can see replication lag, and when there's too much replication lag, our load balancer will automatically remove things from the pool. So um, I didn't get, I, I'm, I don't believe we got the feature flag totally released. We've got the feature, the ability to add feature flags to the load balancer uh, did get implemented, but we haven't added the feature flag for ignoring replication lag yet. Um, in part because there's some we want to do a little bit more testing around uh, feature flags within the load balancer before we uh, add something that could be disastrous, right? And if I um, remember from our last conversation on this, Alex, it's it's a particularly sensitive area of code where if we're not really careful, it, it has very wide ranging impacts to every single thing that we do for everybody. So we definitely would. I mean. The nice thing about the load balancer is typically when it breaks, it doesn't break subtly. Um, it breaks disastrously. Uh, but that's not necessarily actually a good thing, right? It just means most of the time we catch it pretty early uh, when it's broken. Um, that said, it's it's also difficult to test locally uh, other than in limited circumstances. So um, we've got... we. There are some there are some other things happening there too, but I'll actually touch on that when we get to the load balancer improvements area uh, uh, section below here. So the other part we're working on, as I touched on before, was vertical table splitting. Uh, and for in this case, what we want to do, at where whereas before we were focused on pulling out indexes, in this case we're focused on pulling out columns that are infrequently written. So if the columns aren't written very often or updated. Uh, we want to pull those into separate tables because those tables will sit untouched, which means when we get a full page write, so Postgres is writing all of the data, rewriting all of the data in a page um, It in order to reorganize rows, get rid of dead tuples, that kind of thing. It won't have to write columns again that weren't updated. Right. So it, the idea is for these infrequently changed columns, we want them to be somewhere else so that during a full page, right, it doesn't have to worry about it. And that should hopefully reduce our wall rate. Um, Simon is wrapping up his investigation. Well, he he had a he he was going strong on it before he left. But when he's back on vacation from vacation next week, um, he's hopefully will wrap up his investigation about which tables we want to target for what kinds of solutions uh, and yeah, so hopefully more on that next next time. Cool. So I think zooming out, um, lightweight lock contention, we're going to build vertical table splitting as a foundational capability. Part of our investigation here in wall rate, we'll figure out the specific intervention points we want to leverage. And hopefully in combination, that will bring us some notable improvement at the end of the whole process. Yes. So the nice thing about our POC we're working on for vertical table splits right now is it's a it's not it's it's a blueprint, right? And it's not necessarily targeted at lightweight rock lock contention or wall reduction. It's a, a generic set of helpers and procedures to do this vertical table split. And we'll be able to have teams leverage that process in order to address some of these concerns. Cool. All right. So that's kind of our primary items. Um, Similarly, we've got a number of secondary focus items that have taken some time, but and are also continuing to roll over from late last year. Um, this one has been something that we've been working on for a while, but mostly as a secondary incremental priority. There's been a lot of focus to just really focus our efforts to ensure GitLab.com scalability continues to be prioritized, and I think that's why some of this stuff um, seems to be on here for quite some time. But Alex, do you want to maybe give us a quick note on where we are since we last touched base? Yeah. Um, so this is the there are still lingering concerns about some of the we we've had to override a bunch of Rails code, and there are some lingering concerns about the potential damage from that. 
And so we're we're trying to be really careful rolling this out and getting this merged and make sure that we're not doing anything potentially hazardous. Uh, that said, there are only a few comments left to address on that merge request. So hopefully uh, we'll have the, the reordering of this out shortly. Um, we have been collecting milestone versions on migrations for a, a while now. So uh, most of our migrations, all of our migrations, I think as of now um, and going forward have migration or uh, versions, uh, sorry, milestone versions on them. So we'll be able to leverage this code right away once it merges. And we'll also be able to use that code for other things like squashing migrations and some of the other um, housekeeping tasks that we do. Yeah, so similarly as before, I think a lot of the work here, even though it looks like surface level one problem, there's a lot of foundational stuff that we're trying to put in place that will will give us a more robust and reliable system overall. Yeah, this is, this is an especially important fix for self-managed customers who do multi-version upgrades. Um, for everybody else, this will change nothing <laughs> uh, because will they already execute migrations in this order. It's really just for customers who are doing multi-version upgrades, this will make them consistent with customer. They, they will execute their migrations consistently with customers who are not doing, who are doing single version or zero downtime upgrades. Cool. And then lastly, Alex, um, load balancer improvements. I know this, this was also hinted at above, but we also wanted to call it out as a specific item because it relates to some of the work we do above, but it's also kind of its own thing. Yeah. So the load balancer, um, well, and I we didn't we didn't update this part at all, but that's okay. Uh, the load balancer, the uh, so one of the main ways that we're working on the load balancer improvements here are uh, adding the zone aware traffic routing and also adding the feature flag support so that we can make changes more safely within the load balancer. Um, but another thing that happened in the last couple of months is we had a contribution from our dis distinguished engineer, Camille, um, breaking the load balancer out into a gem. And we're really excited about pursuing that work, too, because uh, A, it's most of the way there, and B, will be it'll make it a lot easier to test the load balancer code in isolation. So being able to stand up things like multi-database tests in our testing pipelines so that we can make sure that the load balancer is being properly uh, treat, uh, it tested the way it should be right in, in specs in order to make sure that we're really exercising all of its, all of its uh, potential code paths. Cool. So that's kind of what we've got looking ahead from 16.9. Thank you so much for talking through all of that, Alex. Is there anything else you want to touch on while we're here? No. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And this is the database team 16.9 planning.